On December 7, 1941, Japanese warplanes attacked a U.S. naval base at Pearl Harbor in Oahu, Hawaii, killing more than 2,400 Americans. The surprise attack struck a critical blow against the U.S. Pacific Fleet and drew the U.S. into World War II. The day after Pearl Harbor was bombed, President Roosevelt appeared before Congress. After a brief and forceful speech, he asked Congress to approve a resolution recognizing the state of war between the United States and Japan. I ask that the Congress declare that since the unprovoked and dastardly attack by Japan on Sunday, December 7, 1941, a state of war has existed between the United States and the Japanese Empire. Edward Hopper, an American realist painter, was born in 1882 in New York City. Originally an illustrator, Hopper moved on to painting, creating works that depicted isolation and fear. Edward Hopper used drawings to absorb the world around him, and then used his visual observations to construct the painting. Hopper painted on topics of alienation, isolation, loneliness, and fear, and Edward Hopper's Nighthawks may reflect on these topics because of the world and events happening in Hopper's life in that time. Edward Hopper was always reluctant to discuss himself and his art. Hopper simply said, the whole answer is there on the canvas. Nighthawks is an oil on canvas painting painted by Edward Hopper in 1942, measuring 84 by 152 centimeters, which can be seen at the Art Institute of Chicago. Nighthawks is one of Hopper's most well-known works and is a recognizable painting in American art. Nighthawks depicts four people in a New York City diner at night. The painting shows one waiter and three customers. The Diner Phillies is said to be based off a real diner in Greenwich Village in New York City. Several people have tried but never succeeded in finding the exact location of the original diner. Others believe it never truly existed. Nighthawks is an asymmetrical painting with most of the positive space on the right side. Nighthawks is filled with complementary colors, for example, the orange and the green on the building across from Phillies. When viewing Nighthawks, you first draw your attention to the couple, which are the emphasis of the painting. The woman has light skin and reddish brown hair and is wearing a red dress with red lipstick. The woman seems to be holding something in her hand and a coffee cup to her left. The man sitting next to the woman is light skin, wearing a blue tailored suit, a gray hat, and tie. The man seems to be holding a cigarette and has a coffee cup to his right. The waiter known then as the soda jerk is seen only by a side profile view wearing a white coat and white cap with blonde hair. The waiter seems to be eyeing the customers. Another man is seated alone apart from the couple in a blue tailored suit and fedora with his back turned to the viewer. The man seems to be holding a glass in his right hand. The lone man seems to be apart from everyone else which makes him seem suspicious. The diner itself or Phillies is the main focus. It is the light in all of the darkness. Phillies is lit with fluorescent lights. Phillies has light yellow walls, cherry wood counters, and empty stools. Phillies exterior is blue green. The diner is at an odd angle, as if seen from the view of someone across in the street. The building across from the diner is red brick and seems to be shops that are closed for the night. Hopper only leaves part of the story by leaving many clues but no specific answers. He forces the viewer to complete the narrative. Edward Hopper's other artworks reflect his personal vision of modern American life. In order to understand why Edward Hopper painted Nighthawks, we must look at the events happening in the 1940s. The American social realism depicted in Nighthawks is that the painting was completed in the weeks and days following Pearl Harbor in 1941 when New York City was filled with fear and paranoia about another attack. 
Perhaps the tension that seems to come from the painting was a result of Hopper's internalized fear. New York City held blackout drills as a way to practice hiding the city in darkness if an aerial strike ever came. Perhaps the brightly lit diner set in the gloom of the deserted and lonely city at night suggests sanctuary from the fear of war. Other events in the 1940s were that the American people were anti-Japanese. President Roosevelt signed an, an executive order in February 1942 ordering the relocation of all Americans of Japanese ancestry to concentration camps in the interior of the United States. Over 127,000 U.S. citizens were imprisoned during World War II, their crime being of Japanese ancestry. Despite concrete evidence, Japanese Americans were suspected of remaining loyal to their ancestral land. Japanese American camps were surrounded by barbed wire with armed guards pointing guns inwards. No person of Japanese ancestry living in the United States was ever convicted of any serious act of espionage during the war. Yet these innocent people were removed from their homes and placed in relocation centers, many for the duration of the war. Anti-Japanese propaganda was used to promote a particular point of view from the American people. Japanese propaganda came in the form of posters, cartoons, etc. The Japanese were shown as wearing big glasses, having buck teeth, drawn as monkeys or rats, grinning and rubbing their hands in a very sinister way. Japs! Hundreds of them! This calls for strategy. I'll have to put on my thinking cap. popular in Hollywood in the 1940s and early 1950s, the same decade Nighthawks was painted. Translated from French as black film, the term film noir is usually used to describe a kind of murder mystery movie. Edward Hopper sets the stage for mystery with a classic film noir scene. Streetlights, nighttime settings, dark streets, after hour city diners all fit well with a typical film noir setting. The fact that there is no door shown as an entry or exit to the diner gives the viewer the feeling of being trapped. Many adaptations and parodies of Nighthawks have been produced replacing the customers and waiter with other characters. For example, The Simpsons, Legos, Star Trek, McDonald's, Family Guy, and even the TV show, That 70s Show. Yeah, don't put your hat on the counter, it's all greasy. Hey pal, can I get some uh, half and half? Well, isn't this familiar? My student made artwork was inspired by film noir. I used acrylic paint on canvas to portray a classic film noir scene. 